Hi, my name's David Carmichael. I'm a director at Lister Grier and Harding Architects, a small firm of architects based in Cambridge. Uh, my job title is uh, director. I'm the sole director of the practice at the moment. Uh, the organisation is essentially a, a small design practice based in Cambridge and we specialise in education building design. Over the years that we've been there, um, the practice has carried out numerous projects, uh, not just education, albeit that that be the mainstay of our workload, uh, but we've dealt with uh, shops, cafes and restaurants, bars, research and development and also some housing. My practice is a relatively small design practice. Um, we're probably only six to eight architects. Uh, we've been based in Cambridge uh, since 1956 when the founding partners set the practice up and I myself have been in the practice for 30 years as of this year in actual fact. Um, the projects we, we work on are essentially primarily education projects, a lot of them in the secondary academy sector, uh, but we have worked with primary schools, colleges, universities, but as I say, mainly, mainly in the secondary education sector. I, I guess one of the things that I love about my job is that no one day is the same from one day to another, and it's uh, very much a sort of very bag of activities that, that go on. Uh, being an architect involves designing buildings right from the very outset, coming up with an idea initially, uh, and then developing those ideas alongside a consultant team of engineers, uh, alongside a client, and toing and froing with various different consultants to make sure that the, the actual building is developing in a way that meets everyone's requirements. So I could actually be out on site in the morning looking at one building that's getting developed out on site with some queries from a contractor. I could be at a design team meeting uh, in the afternoon. Uh, I might actually be going off and visiting a new client or actually trying to source some new work by going to visit other schools uh, we do a lot of bidding for projects for schools, so I might be involved in bidding itself. Um, similarly, I might be helping with drawing packages in the office, I might be assisting other people in the office uh, with problems and queries that they have themselves. So, uh, no one day is the same, it's very, very varied, and I think that's why I, I love my role. So I guess with many of you, making a decision about what you're doing is a, is a incredibly tricky task when you're only sort of 14, 15, 16 and I was exactly the same. I had no real idea which way I wanted to go. Um, I had thoughts about interior design and um, the sort of design world generally and I guess when I look back on it I did do an awful lot of revamping my bedroom and, and considering the interior of it etc. Um, and things like Lego I guess when, when you're you know really young I was doing an awful lot of Lego, I'm not sure how that stands up these days, but I, I was building houses uh, well before secondary school effectively in, in terms of Lego. So it was my mum who actually suggested maybe architecture is something that you should consider. So I, I did and uh, I found out that um, I needed to do certain subjects. So I, I, my subjects I did at A level were essentially uh, art based. Uh, I did art, I did engineering drawing and I did English. Um, but you know some, some universities require a different set of uh, skills in terms of physics and maths but I was, I was definitely more on the art side. Uh, so I looked up various universities. I had a very keen interest at that time in terms of windsurfing and um, the idea of going to uni for five years didn't, didn't really phase me at all in actual fact particularly uh, when I started looking at places like Plymouth, which are obviously right next to the sea and enabled me to go and pursue my interests in, in windsurfing. So uh, that was this, the start of a, a fairly lengthy um, course, but the, the actual duration uh, isn't uh, just the five years. There's a couple of years on top of, of that in terms of you having time out in, in industry between um, your university courses. So, I would recommend it to anyone. University is a, a, a great place. Um, you meet like-minded, uh, creative individuals and uh, it was an opportunity just to have, have fun and try out lots of design exercises. I guess one of the benefits of uh, an architectural course is that uh, it's broken up essentially into well, various college chunks but also time out in industry itself. And that gives you an instant opportunity to establish and, and get a feel for the type of practice that you might actually be wanting to pursue your architectural career in. 
it's, uh, it's quite often the case where people get jobs in one particular practice and then they'll move around from one practice to another just because they're gaining new experience or they're wanting to try out different scale practices. I, um, I started at the, the sort of large end. Uh, I started a very large practice in, in London, a firm of uh, architects, Chapman Taylor Partners. In that office alone, there were about 600 people, but there were numerous other um, staff across the world, and they they looked at very large-scale commercial developments such as offices and um, shopping centres. I then decided that I wanted a taste for um, a different type of practice and actually go and try out much smaller design-led practices. It's a far less sort of informal atmosphere. I think there's scope in a much larger practice to potentially get a little bit lost and not really get too much of the hands-on experience that you can gain uh, at first hand in a, um, in a small design-led practice. So having gone from one extreme to another, I then kind of found a, a sort of middle ground-ish with uh, LGH Architects, where we're essentially you know, anything between six and 12 architects at any one time. Um, so that way I was able to really get to grips with some of the design elements of a project and have hands-on experience of actually running a project on a day-to-day -day basis. I think one of the other things about uh, being an architect is the, the very sort of varied nature of, of the work and uh, I, think, I think every single architect, it's not just architecture that they're interested in, there's a whole uh, gamut of uh, other interests in terms of design and other areas. I mean, I'm particularly interested in furniture design, motorcycle design, car design, elements that fall outside of architecture but also um, on a day-to-day -day basis whenever you're looking at any architectural project. In, in theory, we could be designing the door handles, the doors, the, the toilet cubicles, the carpets, the, the ceilings, the walls, any finish within a, um, within a building and any uh, component part that uh, is required to, to build up that building. So different practices have different specialisms. Uh, there's very large practices, there's uh, very small practices, there's multidisciplinary practices where you'll have other engineers and other consultants working within that architectural firm. And then there's just architectural practices themselves that are uh, similar to the one that I have where uh, we just focus on the design of the buildings and we work alongside other consultants. So uh, it's, a very, it's a very varied career and whilst you're studying something called architecture, ultimately that career path can lead to very many different aspects of uh, design uh, and doesn't just uh, focus on one particular element. So I, th I think that varied um, uh, element of works is something that I enjoy very much. Thank you.